Coming up on Fulton Today, tis the season to be careful. What you need to know to stay safe this holiday season. And providing for a growing population in the county, the homeless. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis. Fulton County Police start the holiday season with a word to the wise. Police stats show that crime increases in late November and December as predators prey on holiday shoppers and homes filled with gifts. FGTV's Annalise Baker has our story. Shania, it's electronics like this iPad that are on a lot of holiday shopping lists this season. But to make sure that these gifts don't end up in the wrong hands, police officers say that keeping crime down during the holidays starts at home, but most importantly, it's a community effort. Holiday decorations and an influx of shoppers are telltale signs that the holiday season has arrived. And as shoppers are on the prowl for the most popular gifts this season, so are the predators who are ready to take them. When they're carrying bags, when you're walking closest to the a building, carry the bag closest to the building so that no one has a chance of snatching your items and running away. Residents got firsthand tips from Fulton County Police on how to stay safe during the holidays. One of those tips were to keep valuables out of sight when away from the car or home. If you have a Christmas tree, close your blinds. Don't put all your valuable gifts uh, so that the public can see it. To deter crime at home, Fulton County police officers say to take advantage of that nosy neighbor and let the police know when you're leaving town. Pull at least one car out of the driveway to indicate that someone could be home and leave a few lights on, but avoid turning on the porch light. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to tell if someone's a predator or not, but if something does look suspicious, we want our citizens to call 911. Police say most burglaries occur in the morning and many after Christmas Day. Another thing that we're recommending is that after you open those gifts and you have those high dollar purchases, don't put the empty boxes on the curbside. So announcing to the neighborhood that you have these items in your home. We ask that you break down the boxes uh, and discard them in a discreet manner. Residents should write down the serial number right after they purchase those high ticket items or put a unique mark on them. Also, remember to avoid posting your holiday plans online, but if you do see some suspicious activity, make sure you take a picture with your phone and send it to the police. Remember that every phone call is a report filed, and that's one step closer to putting neighborhood crime to an end. Reporting downtown Atlanta, I'm Annalise Baker for FGTV. All right, thank you very much, Annalise. Now, if you notice any suspicious activity, of course, call 911. Fulton and Atlanta residents get free legal advice on issues with tenants and landlords. Tenant landlord disputes was the topic of the latest Lawyer in the Library series at the Central Branch downtown. Attorneys with the Atlanta Volunteer Lawyers Foundation covered everything from landlord negotiations to evictions. More than 5,365 evictions have been carried out in the county this year. The most important advice from the professionals is to know your rights. Put your communications with your landlord in writing. Uh, if you have questions or think something is um, not in accordance with the law, seek legal advice. Um, there's organizations in town, whether it's our organization, uh, the Atlanta Volunteer Lawyers Foundation, uh, Legal Aid, there are organizations that can get your questions answered. Um, and so educate yourself about your rights before you just leave or um, take some other action in that dispute. There's so much difficulties right now and so much challenges for tenants at the moment. A lots of, of us are looking around to find exactly the right kind of honest and legal open-hearted help that we can get. The Law in the Library series will continue with legal information ranging from consumer debt to wills and advanced directives. You can call the Central Library or go online for times and topics. The Tri-Cities Homelessness Collaborative comes together to deal with the complicated issue of homelessness right here in the county. FGTV's J.F. Franklin has the story. On any given day on the streets of downtown Atlanta, the homeless population is visibly seen. And at night, the population swells with men, women, and children living where they call home. You know, so we're going to go through tough times to get to the right place that we need to be. 
It is this very issue that has the Metro Atlanta Tri-Jurisdictional Collaborative Committee working to find solutions to the homeless problem in Fulton, DeKalb, and the city of Atlanta. The committee met recently in DeKalb County where the public was invited to speak. Fulton County is very proactive in addressing the homeless population. We actually operate several facilities and work with many providers in the uh, neighborhoods to provide homeless services. We run Jefferson Place as a homeless uh, assessment center for men 18 years and older. We have Springdale Place, which is also an assessment center for women and children. Uh, that are homeless at this point in time. We also work with the City of Refuge and over 40 providers in the area uh, to assist homeless individuals. According to the Institute for Children, Poverty and Homelessness, an agency that tracks homeless population trends and information, last year there were just over 1,200 homeless families in Fulton County, and that was more than any other county in the state. Officials fear there will be even more homeless families in 2012. The long-term group uh, goals here are to actually help and prevent homelessness in the future. There's an overall goal by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to end homelessness by 2015, uh, and we are working towards uh, that goal in order to uh, meet the uh, goals of the federal government. Homeless men in the county find refuge and a new start at Jefferson Place, the county's transitional housing venue and program. County partners help to provide services for homeless women and children. However, with the economic climate slowly recovering, there is still a high demand for services for the homeless population, and that is a challenge officials here are trying to address. What things can we do better? We do a lot of things well, but there's always things that we can improve in making a difference in people's lives. According to a national survey from the Institute for Children, Poverty and Homelessness, the need for emergency shelter beds decreased last year, but the need for permit housing increased tenfold. That officials say is their main priority, to find a place for the homeless population to live long term. In downtown Atlanta, I'm Jaya Franklin for FGTV. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, residents looking for a financial break with their household expenses, listen up. Eligible seniors 65 and older can get help with their energy bills through the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. The program is a part of a partnership between the Office of Aging and the Fulton Atlanta Community Action Authority. And for seniors we talk to, this program is a big help. The heating bills has been going up, but we get by this program, you know, we were still able to afford it. They wouldn't be able to keep it warm if they didn't have this program. I think it is very beneficial. Now there are some practical things everyone can do to help cut energy costs. Don't block your air vents, clean and replace filters regularly, lower the temperature on your thermostat. You can get more information on the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program by calling the Office of Aging Starline. Public Works crews are hoping that residents will follow some simple guidelines this year to help keep sewer systems from backing up. Fulton firefighters helped illustrate the proper way to fry a turkey so that public works officials could show the right way to dispose of fog. Fog is the acronym for fats, oils, and grease. Make sure your bird is thawed out. Leave it thawed out uh, however long it takes to thaw that bird out, overnight or usually a day or two. And make sure it's dry before you put him in the oil. Can you get a little water or whatever, it will splash. When poured down sewer lines, the fog combination can be costly and unhealthy for everyone. When you pour fats, oils, or grease down the drain, they solidify in the sewer pipe. And I actually have a photo right here to show you exactly what happens. This is a sewer pipe and this is grease and that forms a clog. And then the sewage flowing through the pipe has nowhere to go but back out into the environment, out into your home. If the clog is in your own line, in the, in the line that goes from the street to your home, that's the homeowner's responsibility. And if the clog forms there and the sewage backs up into your home, then not only do you have to pay the plumber to clean out your line, but then you have to p clean up the sewer, raw sewage that's spilled into your home. And you can get more information on the county's fog program by calling Corlette Banks at the Fulton County Department of Water Resources. And still to come, the county's oldest one-stop health center celebrates fall. We'll take you there in our district by district coverage next. You're watching Fulton today. 
County commissioners approve a policy to prohibit bullying in the workplace and residents in Central Fulton take part in some free health services. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin in District 2 with Commissioner Rob Pitts as he focuses on different ways to crack down on texting while driving. The commissioner discusses a report with the county's assistant police chief about the issue. Chief Stiles says that Fulton County Police have issued only three citations over the last 12 months. Some public safety officials say that the law is too difficult to enforce. It's not always uh, something that's visible to a officer that's passing, uh, either going in the same direction with a vehicle where the driver is, is texting while driving or certainly opposite uh, passing them going the other direction. And it's my understanding that the, uh, some of our state legislators are going to make changes to our law to change it so that it will be illegal to drive while using a handheld device. In 2010, Georgia passed a law banning drivers from using any type of electronic device to text. Studies show that drivers who text are 23 times more likely to crash. In District 5, veterans at the Harriet G. Darnell Senior Multipurpose Center are recognized for their service to the nation. There was a candlelight vigil for deceased vets and their families. Commission Vice Chair Emma I. Darnell lit a candle for her father, who is also a veteran. These candles on this table are symbols of lives that have been lived in pursuit of that principle. It was wonderful. Very teary-eyed. I uh, brought back a lot of memories. Veterans at the center took time to reflect on the past and educate others on history. The good part about it for me is that by being a veteran, getting the GI Bill, I was able to get a college education. We are very appreciative to have had an opportunity to participate in our annual Veterans Day celebration here at the Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility. The veterans of this community and indeed throughout Fulton County have made it possible for us to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy, including the opportunity to come together today. There are a number of programs in the region to help veterans access services. For more information, call the Georgia Crisis Line at 404-613-3675. In District 6, Commissioner Joan Garner attends the first annual Neighborhood Union Fall Festival. Fulton County departments like Workforce Development, Cooperative Extension, and Behavioral Health were on hand to inform the community about the services that they offer. Fulton County's health services are available to the community. This is a way for Fulton County to give back to the community, to say for those who are uninsured, who can't afford to go out and get flu shots or to get health screenings, this is a way that Fulton County is servicing its, its residents. The fair included free health screenings, WIC services, and flu vaccines. Information was also available on health topics and workforce development. The Neighborhood Union Health Center in Vine City opened in 2009. It is the county's first full-service integrated health care center. To contact the center, call 404-612-4665. And finally, in District 7, Commissioner William Bill Edwards leads the charge to prohibit bullying in the workplace. Workplace bullying is repeated health-harming mistreatment of an employee. This could include work interference, verbal abuse, or exploitation. We also have to realize that this is an employer's market, uh, that people uh, are doing a lot of things they would not have done to protect their jobs and to protect their security. So they take a lot of stuff from people just to do that. Commissioner Edwards said bullying in Fulton County will not be tolerated. The resolution approved by the Board of Commissioners will call for a full investigation if bullying is reported. The Workplace Bullying Institute reports that bullying in the workplace is four times more likely than sexual harassment. With this week's District by District coverage, I'm Daryl Peake. Thank you very much. And when we come back, find out how a national drugstore chain celebrates an important anniversary. Stay with us.
Portions of the following segment are part of the Fulton County Common Ground Initiative. Common Ground, the county's comprehensive solution to the problem of health disparities in the community. This week's Common Ground Report focuses on the efforts of a national drugstore chain to help homeless mothers and children right here in Fulton County. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has the story. As members of the Rite Aid team unloaded the bright blue bags, others carried them to a storage room at Springdale Place, the county's home for homeless women and their children. So what's in the Rite Aid health kits? Well, there is body wash, toothbrush holders, dental floss, and lotion, just to name a few of the many items that are in this awfully heavy package. Delivering the health kits was only the beginning. The Rite Aid employees wanted to tour the facility, see the playground, inside a family's room, meet a client and her children. I've grown as a person since I've come. I've believed in the program from the start. Rite Aid as an organization, we are really about donating, getting to know the community beyond a prescription event. And based on that 50th anniversary, we wanted to give back in a meaningful way. The director of the county's Office of Emergency and Transitional Housing assured the visitors of the quality of services by saying he would trust Springdale Place with his own family if need be. If something happened to me on my way home today, and things don't quite work out the way that I thought it was going to work when I did all my little planning. You know, things never work the way they're supposed to. But if it didn't, in my heart I know that there's a place like Springdale Place. We're very appreciative and we thank Rite Aid for coming out and thinking of Springdale Place. So donations like these health kits put together by Rite Aid and the bedding which was donated to Springdale Place by J.C. Penney. They help the county help these women and children transition to better lives. In Southwest Atlanta, I'm Lynn Vaughn, FGTV. Thank you very much, Lynn. Now, Springdale Place accepts financial contributions, clothing, bedding, and you can volunteer your time. Contact the Office of Emergency and Transitional Housing at 404-613-0412 to donate or if you need or know of someone who needs the services offered. Well, we're observing this month's Great American Smokeout to help smokers quit. This is the 37th year the American Cancer Society has set aside a day in November employing smokers to quit if just for one day. The Smoke Free Coalition of Fulton County is sponsoring a free screening of the critically acclaimed documentary Addiction Incorporated to mark the smoke out. The film will be shown on November 29th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on the campus of Morehouse College. Health Promotion Manager Nazira Dewu says the target audience are teens and young adults. It causes coronary artery disease heart attacks, it causes chronic lung disease, and many people are not aware about asthma, so it causes asthma also, and sometimes infant deaths because of smoking. Every year there are 700 deaths related to smoking in Fulton County, for more than 400,000 deaths in U.S. total. Fulton County's Health Services Health Promotion Division can help you quit smoking. The number 404-613-1243. There's info online at FultonCountyGAHealth.org. And finally, in the health news, this reminder to get your child vaccinated against the flu if you haven't done so already. And you may be able to do that at the child's school. Fulton County, in collaboration with the Georgia Department of Public Health, is providing the flu vaccine to county schools, public or private, that sign up for the program. The state provides the vaccine and reimburses the county $15 per student for those who are uninsured. Fulton Health officials are on the state committee that coordinates the school-based flu program. Well, the state of Georgia has supplied Fulton County with quite a lot of flu vaccine. Fulton County has supplied Fulton County with quite a lot of vaccine. We have more than enough. If anyone calls us and asks us to provide flu vaccine for their students, their, their teachers, their parents, we have it. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends flu shots for everyone six months old and older every year. This program helps prevent the spread of the flu among school kids and reduces absenteeism. To inquire about the school-based flu program, call 404-612-1677 or again, go online at FultonCountyGAHealth.org. And still to come on Fulton today, a big exhibit on miniature art. Stay with us.
watching Fulton Today. There is a tiny art exhibit at one of the county's largest art centers. The Trading Cards exhibition made its way to the Southwest Art Center. In 1997, a Swedish artist started the trend of trading original art on the size of a baseball card with other artists. Though this social event began years ago, this is the first time local artists showcased work in the trading exhibition. Well, I was inspired by actually, believe it or not, a beehive, and I wanted to do something with that honeycomb pattern. A lot of my artwork focuses on issues with women and girls, and so I did a very whimsical, playful approach with the little girl pieces and a little more womanly approach with the pieces that feature women. Now residents can see art like that and more until January 2013. Log on to FultonArts.org for more information. And finally, an art project helps children to be thankful for life's simplicities. Children made dream catchers at the College Park Branch Library to honor the Native Americans who helped pilgrims settle the United States. A traditional charm in Native American culture, the dream catcher is normally made of wood, string, and feathers. It hangs above children's beds to catch their bad dreams. While children decorated their craft, they thought about what they were thankful for this holiday season. I'm thankful for my parents, shelter, um, my friends, um, clothing, because it's that close, shelter, and I don't think I'll be here without God giving me all these things. So I'm thankful for everything He has given me. Children can make more holiday crafts at any of the libraries. Just log on to the website for classes and times. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs here on FGTV. Go to our website to take a survey, or you can also email or call us. The number 404-612-8317. The email address is fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash fgtv and friend us on Facebook. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnya Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about. Fulton County.